What's going on guys, Kyger. Today I'm bringing you my full build guide and rotation guide for bow or ranger. So we're going to be looking at both marksman and wind chaser. All of these, if you want to see the full breakdowns, will be on the new cheat sheets on my discord. They have been updated to version 1.35 so you will be able to see all the new fairies including almond blossom and uh, hydra f uh, flames you'll also see her right there actually uh, hydra flames she is on this team now first i will start off by talking about the fairies that i am using so this is going to be pve and then we'll talk about pvp so this is our PVE layout right here and that is going to be focusing on the uh, two sides that are on the book on the right hand side Chestnut Rose and Winter Cherry which are focused on giving the enemy a fire, uh, fire weakness and then increasing damage ideal to the fire weakness. Then when we swap over to Bow which is our damage class which is why we have it set up this way you want to be going into the fight with with your book put down your abilities your crit buff and all your other skills and then the two fairies swap to the bow which is your main damage dealer class and then these are your two main damage dealer fairies now I get the question all the time for pretty much every fairy in the game what wills in generation should I be putting on them? And that's the wrong question. The uh, right question is what wills in generation should I be using for my build? So, whereas a specific fairy itself, you, there could be a situation where uh, you would want to put certain things on them, but generally you want to be looking at your build as a whole for example here we're built all around crit rate crit damage and just raw offense so all four of our fairies are going to be kitted out that way all four of them have the break free will set which if we go over here we'll see the level four bonus four set break free level four after triggering core skill crit rate plus 15 percent and crit damage plus 54.2 percent for eight seconds with the 15 second cooldown so over half the time we have crit rate crit damage bonus along with our crit bonus from uh the book from priest as well as our crit rate crit damage bonus from never miss then for our cores we have two slaughters and two fierce attacks it does not matter which one they are on as long as they are on your four active fairies there are other pv things to go over but those are in other videos for those particular game modes so let's just show you our abilities and what we're doing here so over here on book uh, we will see the four that I'm using right here is the star blessing the buff then I'm not using the heal because I have no reason to heal during PvE for the most part then I am using forbidden thunder zone which does good AOE damage and purification of light which also does good AOE damage then over to the bow I am just doing the full left side marksman and that is the main idea here I'll show you right here the main idea is whenever we use any of our abilities our basic attack lights up green then if we use the basic attack that's shattering arrow and then shattering arrow and lowers the cooldown of our ultimate skill multi arrow so you can just click the ability and it will do what it's supposed to do or you can line it up this is going to be more important in pvp because we're going to be doing this a lot bam bam and then tons of damage going out now 
we're using this a the second ability right here in PvE, but we're not going to be using it in PvP. Even though it can be used for more shattering arrows, so we can get our ultimate more fast. So right there, our ultimate faster. It locks us in an animation, as you'll see. Bam, bam, bam. The amount of damage it's doing is good, but it takes too long to make it ha to. It takes too long, especially in PvP, where people can jump on you. Then we always want to be using our never miss right before our multi arrow, and that is to increase the damage as well as our multi arrow can hold three stacks of increased damage. And if we have zero, mul uh, never miss counts as two stacks of it. You will see this by our multi arrow having the golden circle around it. It will not tell you how many you have but that will above our head we have the second charge of the green above our head we use another ability the ability doesn't do it it's the shattering arrow so now we have level three of our multi arrow bonus we use the multi arrow they go away and we're at zero never miss gives us full right there now we'll jump over to showing you the full rotation of what you should be using so remember this is PvE. Alright, summon the dummy. And then this is your full burst window. One, well, sorry, reset. That is just for this class. We're doing a whole build here. So we're going to be starting over here in Priest. So Priest, buff, Throw down the three abilities, throw down the two fairies, and then swap over one, two, three, keep it go stop. Whenever there's a, a second of no damage, it stops it. But that is the main combo. Uh wait. I'll skip forward a few seconds and then show it to you again. Alright, so we're going to want to be going from left to right with our abilities. All of them are set up that way for PvE. So we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, and while we're in between button presses, we're going to be clicking on our fairies. So 1, 2, fairy, 3, fairy, 4, swap, 1, basic attack, 2, basic attack, 3, basic attack ultimate and then you're able to immediately go into one two and then it should be one and then if you're hitting an enemy this is going to give you cooldown on your ultimate and you should be able to get a second ultimate off of that kind of window if not there is a secondary per, uh, way that you can take if you're not getting good procs and that would be one basic two basic three one basic ultimate and those are the two main ways now if we swap over to talk about PvP the main difference we're going to be making is effectively just swapping over shifting bolt instead of our second ability there and if we take a look right here it says it just does AOE damage but it also has a brief slowing effect boom really messes with people it's really really good in things like top league where you can't use your fairies but you will still keep the crit rate crit damage buff from the fire echo so we'll be looking at a very similar uh, rotation of one two fairy three fairy four swap one fairy two fairy one basic three basic ultimate and now we're ready to one basic two and then that's it remember two doesn't give us a basic and then when one comes up and we basic again we should be ready to ultimate again as long as we're hitting a target with each of those shattering arrows. 
Now let me show you the difference between this and Wind Chaser. All right, so now let's check out Wind Chaser. Wind Chaser is primarily made to be a PvP type character. And why I say that is if we go over here to the passive, we will see cooldown minus 40%, that's good for all game modes. Dodge plus 1%, pretty much just PvP. And one of our two main skills, uh, Strength of Nature, which gets rid of debuffs, including stun, which is primarily PvP. For PvE, we can generally get out of most of those. Now, it can also do well in PvE. I suggest Wind as the element primarily because of what we just saw. We have Wind Chaser skill cooldown minus 40%, Wind Echo gives you more cooldown, and then whenever we use uh, Shifting Bolt, which is our main skill that changes based on the skill we used before, to, uh, gives you damage bonus for 20% of your cooldown reduction, which will be increased by wind for 5 seconds that you can trigger every 10 seconds, so half the time you will have a damage bonus. And that this is Shifting Bolt. This is the one that they're talking about. And as you'll see, whenever we use Break Free or the third skill, this changes each time. It'll also change if we use the fourth skill. There's that one. And then when we do the fourth one, if we use the fourth uh, strength of nature and then break free, it'll summon a big sword and, sl and slam it in the ground. That's only ever going to come up in PvP, but let's show you the uh, fairies in the rotation. So the two that are on the bench is... Uh, what's her name right there? Wind... Camellia and uh, Hyakinth and that is primarily because my Hyakinth is pretty low also he does give you more cooldown but only during the activation there can be times where you want to use him in PvE but I believe the other four fairies are bringing more to PvE and PvP than the others uh, there are some high powered people that do bring uh, Camellia into PvP and that is for the same pre reason people bring Laurel for just all she does is damage but the amount of damage is really really high so this is going to depend if you are overwhelmingly stronger than most players you can just one-shot people with Camellia, but I mean, at that point, why you could just use other things and do better. For most players, this is the ideal setup, and as far as the wills, it's going to be very similar to what we were looking at before. Crit rate, crit damage, uh, we can also look at uh, the o only other option, in my opinion, would be Soul Hunt which increases damage dealt to enemies that are immobilized or stunned. We are not doing stuns with this, but we are doing a lot of immobilization. So that is a valid strategy. We are also doing two slaughters and two fierce attacks to round us out. Let's go back to the dummy and show you uh, our PvE rotation, and then we'll talk about our PvP. So, I'm not going to summon the dummy because it'll pause on us, but we're doing the same thing. One, two, fairy, three, fairy, go. Ideally, it would be the other two fairies the other way around because you want Dandelion to have the wind bonus, and she only gets it if you use the other fairy first. And then, right after you're done with those buttons, you swap over, and then one, two, then you start using fairies. Boom boom and remember our fourth skill still does shifting bolt even though we can't make use of it so it's a good filler for when we're waiting for the cooldowns and it doesn't matter if you use one or three before two one or three before two you will still get that damage bonus as you see up here when chaser damage up right there you, but while all, th all those three are on cooldown, you want to be using Shattering Arrow, Shattering Arrow, 
and just be doing extra damage and that is why it's a low cooldown and we have more cooldown from the wind uh, the wind echo as well as uh, the wind chaser passive that allows it to come up more often than even uh, the other main class marksman as you see it's it's just always up and so that and the basic attack is a nut is plenty of extra damage in between using any of your other abilities now let's talk about PvP as far as PvP if you're going to be doing no fairy PvP just like top league you'll be using the build we just showed you and if you're doing fairy allowed PvP this is the build you'll be looking at the only main change is the fourth skill the uh, straight arrow shattering arrow from marksman for the fairy no fairy allowed pvp and then strength of nature our fourth skill from wind chaser for our uh fairy allowed pvp the reason being fairies are the main sources of stuns and most fairy allowed game modes like thunder war crystal battlefield things like this guild war um, that's generally where you'll be having stuns happen as well as need to reposition yourself quickly so this is going to not invisible but harder to see it's like a white outline uh, get rid of stuns and everything heal us and make us faster all things we want in these fairy allowed game modes it also changes our second skill for the big sword uh, the big uh, arrow that goes and crashes down on an area now what we're going to be doing is very similar to what we showed you before one two fairy three fairy four swap one two throw our fairies boom and then we have time second skill and then if anyone tries to stun us boom and we're out and about ready to do our stay away from me strategy now the only class that you're really going to have trouble with is marksman and that's because we are a mid-range specialist we don't want to be in melee of somebody uh, let's use the dummy for example we don't want to be a melee of somebody but we do want to be at mid-range right here whereas marksman hits you from over here so where this class wind chaser is all about you can't catch me you can't catch me uh, the range of these skills aren't as far as marksmen and marksmen will be able to take over the battle by just hitting us at a range we cannot respond to so that's it for both sides for PvP and PvE for both Rangers subclasses. Let me know what you guys think down below. And until next time, guys.